been trying to get information on this case, and now police are finally saying something. 31-year-old Nicholas Sexton of Rhode Island and 34-year-old Randall DeLuce of Massachusetts are each charged with three counts of murder and one count of arson. There's electricity in this room, and they are hoping for a win, and Kevin is hoping to get to work. So Kevin Ray has come down. He has said that they just don't see a path to victory, thanking his supporters, and a lot of supporters still here, still happy, say they're proud of him. Put up a great race. Been in trouble here in Maine before. In 2005, Sexton stabbed a man in the neck at a lead better. They're saying, we think we're going to surprise a lot of folks tonight. I'm joined now by Senator Olympia Snow. And Senator, why was it so important for you to be here tonight? Collins, who will soon be Maine's senior senator, says she knows King quite well and is looking forward to working with him. The Republican says people are tired of the negative campaigning and partisanship in Washington. She expects King to reach across the aisle to help break the gridlock. Juan Contreras reportedly pleading guilty and been sentenced to 50 years for the murder of 81-year-old Grace Burton. We will bring you much more information on this throughout the day on WABI.TV and tonight on TV5 News. Deputies are still trying to determine if the hunters were hunting on Hebert's land or just very close to it. Right now, no one's been charged, but once deputies complete the investigation, the district attorney will make the decision on charges. A missing 10-year-old girl from Colorado was reportedly spotted here in Maine. You're excited because of the weekend. I am excited. I'm always yeah. excited for the weekend. Yeah. Two Ooh. whole days without you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you throw me under the bus? <laughs> I just had you. Yeah. Just I know that. <laughs> the annual Big Band Dinner Dance is going on right now in Brewer. The 17-piece Queen City Band is performing at Jeff's Catering on Littlefield Way. When something's going on with your child, you want to know what's causing it and what it is. For a family in Waldo, they've been trying to get those answers for more than a decade. Every NASCAR fan has a favorite part of the sport. The Rex? And the Rumble? Michael Kelly likes the action. He also likes the drivers. I can't believe you got Jeff Gordon in there upside down. We took a little trip this February to North Carolina. And to see what? NASCAR Hall of Fame, of course. His bedroom is a Hall of Fame of its own. That was Michael's first encounter with Tony Stewart. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, how many kids have met, let's see, Richard Childress and Kevin Harvick. I mean, I could list off, and he remembers them all. The early years of the boys at the racetrack. Michael was born a healthy kid, but then things took a turn. Look out the window. Yeah. What do you see out there? Low muscle tone. His hips were constantly either out of the socket or needing a surgery. So I counted up the first six years of his life. He spent 27 months in a body cast. His preferred position. <laughs> it's been 22 years and his pit crew of doctors still can't figure out why his body is crashing. Does he have cerebral palsy? No. Does he have spina bifida? No. Does he have muscular dystrophy? No. One thing they do know is a name. Rare genetic chromosomal disorder so rare that it has never been identified yet in the human world. It's been only in the plant world. It was called triplication of chromosome 17. He's never been able to walk. He has the titanium rod in his back in addition to the plates and the screws in the hip. So he's like a bionic man. Physically, his life hasn't been on the smoothest track. Some days are long, some days we don't sleep. But one thing's clear. His mind is good and his body is is not so good. You know, he's just stuck, a regular kid stuck in a body that doesn't work so well. You should never count Michael out of the race. Doctors don't know why Michael has this strange genetic disorder. His mom, Carol, tells us she's been told it's likely no one else will ever have exactly what Michael has. It's been difficult to get any services for him because he doesn't fit into any of the specific categories. They do the best they can, a lot of times just by winging it. When this is how your morning starts. My neighbor called and said, don't leave your house because yeah. there's somebody across the street with a, a gun. Morning routines quickly shift. I saw the swap people with their guns and, and I was like I'm going back inside. It started around 430 when a woman was reportedly assaulted by a man inside her daughter's house on Dirigo Drive. The two women were able to get away but couldn't get an 11 month old boy out of the house. She said that uh, the, the father of the, the baby came inside uh, or was trying to get inside um, and went in trying to find his gun uh, and it wasn't loaded but he ended up loading it uh, and then 
hitting her mother on the back of the head. The Bangor Police Special Response Team sent a robot into the house. Then the team went in. We were all freaking out. Well, my fear was that there was going to be shots fired in the neighborhood. Police found 29-year-old Jared Ross on the second floor. The baby was there too. They all came out and she ran inside for the baby. The baby boy is fine. The woman who was attacked has a cut on her head. It's kind of frightening because this is a pretty quiet area. By 9 a.m., things were back to normal, and the daily routine on Darago Drive could resume. In Bangor, Carolyn Callahan, WABI TV5 News. Cats are in my home. From Caitlin Schesser. Caleb Schesser. Matt Schesser. Ben Schesser. Mary Wybie. Mark Wybie. You can feel the love as soon as you walk in. We sing together as a family. Uh, that's one of the blessings that God has given us. This is a family that truly takes care of one another, but it isn't always easy. It, it takes a lot of my time and energy because there's so much involved with it. So much involved because all four of her kids have Tourette's. They all started out with facial tics, which is where it starts, is in the face. Most of the time it's a tick that we can't help. If we try to stop ticking, then it's like swallowing a hot coal that just it burns going down. Benjamin is the second oldest. He has the most severe case. He could sit there and sit in that chair and he'd read and read and read. That's all he could do. And then one time he couldn't even read. He couldn't hold the book. Benjamin sees a specialist in New York City and in less than two months, he's having a surgery that could change his life. Benjamin is uh, the fifth person in the United States that I know of to have deep brain stimulation surgery for Tourette's. The doctor saw Benjamin's YouTube page and he immediately knew he was someone who might benefit from deep brain stimulation. They go in and they put two little electrodes, uh, um, discs, into each side of his brain and um, that's one surgery. And then the next day they put in two pacemaker, pacemakers in his chest and they run the wires up behind his head and then what happens is they set a frequency to interrupt the constant signal for the ticks to, to, to stop the ticks being so continuous. Like any surgery, it's a risk. They try it and I'm scared, you know. It's normal to be scared. But this risk could make this mom's dreams come true. I want to see him feel good about himself. I want to see him be able to accomplish something even as simple as sweeping a floor. We told you this is a loving family. They even made us feel like part of it. And they want to help other families keep the faith. Just accept these people for who they are and don't judge them because they got the Tourette's because they can't help it. There are going to be days when it's just hard to get up in the morning because you don't know how bad your tics are going to be and how little you're going to be able to do. But the thing is to support each other and not Pencil. say negative things. And Learn about it more, try and seek help, and try to accept that you have this so you can help possibly someone else who's going through denial. No matter what happens, there's no doubt these seven people will continue to smile, even when times are tough. I said, you just kid. Benjamin's surgery is in December in New York City. It's expensive for the family to pay for all the trips to New York and other medical needs. So there is a fund set up through First Bank in Rockland. If you'd like to donate, tell the bank it's for Ben's cry for a cure.